Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As some of you might know, uh, photography is one of my favorite hobbies and I've owned many different mirrorless cameras uh, in the past and is currently own uh, a Nikon Z8 and I've used Sony and other products before as well. Uh, but never own uh, an action camera or any such uh, POV cameras. Uh, but I have a trip coming up and I've been reading up on uh, just taking some kind of action camera uh, for a Safari uh, and Insta360 X4 was one of the cameras that I've researched about a lot, uh, read about it, uh, but never really uh, cared to uh, about 360 cameras. But the more I, I read about the details and the way camera works, I think it would be, be a good uh, addition to my arsenal because especially uh, when you can reframe the uh, your videos afterwards it gives you a lot more flexibility because then you are not worried about uh, focusing and making sure your subject is in in, in the middle or is within uh, what you're trying to capture with a 360 degree give you a lot more more freedom so I ended up picking up an X4 uh, camera so just want to quickly go over that and see what it comes with and and some of the accessories that I bought as well based on on the uh, recommendation so as you can see, I've already taken off the plastic of that. So, got your main camera. So we're gonna put it on the side. The side, we got the box, which I believe have the rest of the accessories. So that's a soft case that it comes with. Have a hard time opening this up. Let's put it on the side. Nothing here. So this one has your lens caps, or the protective lens card, as they call it. These are the basic version. There's some instructions on how to put them in. Uh, should be a straightforward compared to the the previous one, where we actually have to stick on and remove them. These actually slide in and then you just twist them uh, to lock in place. And here it gives you uh, the instructions on when you put them on. You go in the setting and make sure these are selected that you have lens guard in. Other than what you can see, some guides, safety guides, waterproofing, warranty card, a quick start guide, and a couple of some, some stickers. So back to our thing. I was trying to avoid damaging this because it seems like there's no other way around it. It's pretty decent, soft material. So here's your guard, the overheating guard. So what you put on that. So what I've read that basically the camera becomes so hard that it's uh, it's uncomfortable uh, to touch. So you basically put on this card for that. Furthermore, you have a USB-C to USB-C cable, uh, cleaning cloth, and again there's just some instruction for the thermal grip cover. Or install it. All right, so these things aside, let's look up what exactly this camera is about. So you got your couple of buttons right up front. You have one lens. Let's see, it has plastic covering on top of it. So I currently do not have a lens since cover installed, so this is just one. And on the bottom, you have the second lens. So that's how it creates a 360 video. It, so you have those two sensors and two lenses, which cover. The 360 part of the video. So we install the thermal guard on the side. We have microphone, speaker, a power button, and a quick programmable button that you can change accordingly. I think by default you it's used for switching modes. Up front you have two buttons: so you, uh, start and stop uh, your recording, and also for settings. 
on this side again you have another uh, microphone this side you have a USB-C port and these two tabs are to take out your battery so one thing you notice is that when you click on these you see the orange part that means the battery is not currently seated especially if you're going on in inside water make sure that this is your yellow is not showing and your battery is completely clicked in otherwise it will not be be completely sealed so here's a bigger battery a newer battery that x3 x4 uses compared to x3 and side that and as you can see it that's where the battery goes and that's your where your micro sd card goes so i think that's a good design because your card goes in so it's easier to waterproof it so once you put down the battery back make sure everything is covered and you're not showing any orange part of it okay, sorry about that so just following over here turn it on and as you can see light flashing right now and it's recording both sides of turn back and same thing with the guard you can take this out and on the bottom you have a quarter inch tripod connectivity or so you can connect your tripods or any other accessories that go in there all right so that's a quick, a quick overview of the 360 camera and one point part see what the accessories that i bought so i got one selfie stick two selfie sticks because selfie stick one uh, is the most important part of making a 360 degree camera uh lens cap this is a rubberized lens cap that's, that goes over your two lenses let's see Should have gone that or something, but that was the closest thing around. So. Not much to it. Let's see. So just so that'll protect your your lens for any bumps or scrapes or scratches right, so that's on the side and then the thing that I got was this horizontal action mount uh, I had not seen this one before uh, but going through one of the videos on YouTube uh, I found it and just thinking about how I, I would plan to use my camera I think this is a must-have accessory for me. Uh, the reason being is the way this thing works is basically it's closed like that, connects to the bottom of the clutch, and here it gives you the same connectivity. Either you can use uh, mounting like that or your typical uh, action mount similar to your GoPros and other cameras and this is held by magnets so the reason why I was saying that it's good for me or I would recommend that is that once you have that then you don't have to orient your camera in in landscape or in portrait mode like that when you're putting on a selfie stick or because that makes it a lot more top, top heavy and once you have it on the side then the weight is distributed much better and is easier to install and and uh, on the test selfie stick or if you had on the headband it's much more easier and i think the weight will be distributed much better so that's why i ended up picking this uh putting this aside the last of this series was the monkey tail so let's just open this one up since I have that. so the reason for picking this up even though i had two other selfie sticks as well is 
this just gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, so if you want to, so basically, try not to drop my camera. So that's how you install it, and then it's have this can be turned in any way. So especially if you want to put it on a branch or some somewhere where you cannot put on a, uh, you don't have space or tripod. These are very flexible legs, so you can mold them and just put them. Probably if you want to just do a tripod like thing. So, see, it. something like that. So it'll give you just more flexibility to put your camera on different places. All right, so that's that. Oh, the camera is turned on, so I'll take it off. So as you can see, if I was putting it on, on this side, it will be even more top heavy and then it'll just flip over. So one of the first selfie things that I bought with the, with the camera was this Insta360 uh, two-in-one stick and, and tripod. Uh, again, the main reason for that, even though it's not a huge, it does not go very, it's not a very lengthy uh, stick, but it's for two purposes. One is basically, so if you look at the instructions, so it goes from nine inches all the way up to 41.3 inches. So it's pretty decent. But for me, the prime fine reason was this being a tripod. So if you're not using it as a selfie stick, you can just open the legs, put it on there, and then you can use your camera like that. If you're planning to use it as a webcam uh, or on, on the desk uh, or anywhere else. Basically, if you just want to take a picture uh, or, or make a video, so you give your a tripod itself, clamp it down, and then you can just pull these out and then make it as a okay. That's why my camera is to zoom in toward to take the videos. Uh, but gives you an idea. So that's that, and the, the main selfie stick that I plan on using is going to be this one, which is a uh, Bell King long, so it goes up to all the way to 77 inches. So as you can see, comparatively it's a very slim design, similar to what this one is. You can see the size if went closed. But very lightweight, so I'm sure it's going to be a problem in the back. The design I really liked about most of the selfie sticks are friction. So when you pull it out, it just holds it like there, or you have different knobs. The way this one works is you pull it out, and then you have twist. So you can stop it anywhere you want. doesn't have to all the way, and then you just snap it back. Just rotate it, and it basically locks in place. So really, really good feature, unlike basically some of the selfies I've seen, they either go one way, so you have to, if they are in different seg sections, you have to extend them at least by that section before they lock. This one you can lock it any, any place you want. And it stays pretty firm. When you want to unlock, just, just twist it on the other side, as you can see, unlock it, lock it, and then unlock the section, goes in, and you log back. So here was a quick look on X4 and some of the accessories that I bought. So I'm gonna uh, play with it a little bit and see how it compares to um, the quality that I'm used to from my uh, regular cameras. I'm sure it won't be as good, but the reason why picking X4 was not a, just because of the quality of the videos, but more of a, the flexibility that it provides and that's what I'm hoping that it will give me as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please com comment below, uh, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you, and see you in the next one.